instant reaction from President Trump tonight, tweeting this, presidential harassment. That's it. Okay, let's turn to National Security Attorney Bradley Moss. Republican Congressman from Florida, Matt Gates, who's on the House Judiciary Committee, they're going to be doing the questioning. Plus, uh, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz, author of the book, The Case Against the Democratic House Impeaching Trump. Welcome to all of you gentlemen. Good evening, Sean. Okay, I want to start with something that Congressman Nadler said tonight. Obviously, he is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, where impeachment would start, where this hearing is going to take place. Um, can we play that from uh, the chairman about the subpoena? There is no right to defy a congressional subpoena. Uh, the White House might assert some privilege, but when they uh, uh, revealed this, a lot of the information to Mueller and even to private attorneys, they waived the privilege. So. Uh, I think he'll answer the questions that are put to him because it's his civic duty to do so, and he's an upstanding uh, prosecutor. Okay, so they've reached a deal here. Did you know about it before the subpoena went out? No, it was just a week ago in the Judiciary Committee when I asked Chairman Nather whether he intended to subpoena Robert Mueller, and he said he would not answer at that time. So I hope we're not in store for impeachment by surprise, as this seems to feed into the elements of the Democratic Party that are more focused on President Trump and sort of relitigating the Mueller report than in dealing with the humanitarian crisis at our border or dealing with many of the other challenges that I think a lot of swing district Democrats would like to be working on it this time. All right, Professor Dershowitz, uh, to the legalities of this, their Chairman Nadler said, you know, you can try to exert different privileges, but these people have talked to Nadler and because, or excuse me, to Mueller, and because of that, we may be into probe, uh, probe into some of those conversations. Your take. Well, the irony is that precisely what Nadler wants to ask Mueller about, Mueller can't answer. He can't answer any questions about why he didn't uh, recommend prosecuting President Trump, why he didn't recommend prosecuting people who weren't prosecuted. Justice Department regulations and traditions say once a prosecutor decides not to prosecute, that's it. He keeps his mouth shut. What he can answer questions about is what's not necessarily in the report, namely the Steele dossier, the failure to properly inform the FISA court, the reasons why certain people were put on his investigating committee. Those are all appropriate. So in the end, I think the Democrats are going to see this backfire. The questions they want to answer, Mueller will never answer. But the questions the Republicans want to ask, Mueller will have to answer because he won't have any privilege or any restrictions on what he can say. So I think this is going to backfire on the Democrats. All right. Bradley doesn't seem convinced. I see a little head shaking <laughs> over here. Uh, what do you make of that assessment? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of what he, uh, the professor just said that he actually can't talk about. He can't go into the details of the FISA warrants, not only because Robert Mueller wasn't there, but because it's all still classified. There's very limited portions that came out. Same thing with the dossier and all the information that they relied upon it. It's all caught up in this ongoing IG investigation. Robert Mueller is not going to intrude upon that. He's not going to get into those issues. He's going to refer back and over and over and over to what he put in the report. He's probably going to read it line for line at times, if only to reiterate his point. But I am remain unconvinced so far as to what we're going to truly get out of this hearing. I'm skeptical at the moment. Well, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, says this is what they're going to ask about. He outlines some of the questions that they have. Of course, his committee is the one in conjunction with judiciary that's going to hold this public hearing. We have any number of questions about the counterintelligence investigation and the role of the counterintelligence agents within his team, uh, to questions about some of the prosecutorial decisions that were made. Uh, we have fact questions about uh, some of the statements that are made in the report. So there are any number of issues that we wish to cover with him. All right, Congressman, what questions are you going to have? Because you're going to get to sit there and ask some as well. The Mueller team was an HR Chernobyl. Don't take my word for it. Look at the last inspector general report where the IG, appointed by President Obama, widely respected in the Congress, said that it was inappropriate for Robert Mueller to bring Peter Strzok and Lisa Page onto his investigative team after they had already worked on the Hillary Clinton investigation, that that's not something you would normally see. And so I think we have legitimate questions about how all these people ended up on the Mueller team that had a history of donating financially to Democrats and there didn't seem to be sufficient balance. There may be reasonable answers to those questions, but I think the American people understand that if you've got bad ingredients going into a gumbo, you're going to get a bad gumbo. And if you've got biased people running an investigation, you may end up with a more biased result.